Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video. And in this video, let's talk informally about the Google's I.O. event. So yes, I have just finished watching the event. It was amazing, I really enjoyed it. And there are a few points which do affect me as a programmer and is surely going to affect you as a programmer or an Android developer or in general as a programmer because as the technology moves towards and makes a progress uh, towards the future, it's always going to affect every programmer, whether you are you're a programmer in Java or not, whether you code in Android or not, because somehow this technology actually affects all of us. So let's start, and I want to touch upon a few good points that came upon uh, in this Google I.O. event, and I'm really happy to see those things. So let's get started with that. So First and foremost, what I would like to address here is I am really happy that uh, Google is actually thinking about the well-being of uh, really balance between a life of digital life and a real life. Because, you know, I, I receive these kinds of email a lot that, hey, somehow I am spending too much time on mobile instead of learning all these things. I know I can if I can spend these time and learning something and build something productive, but instead I end up watching some like really not so good videos or maybe something unnecessarily doing on an app and even I have no idea what I'm doing there. So yes, I'm really happy that actually Google have addressed this. Now personally, I would like to share my experience as well here. From last five months, I actually read that in a book, I read that and it is really effective that when you actually grayscale your phone and turn off all the notification, it's really effective. I really absolutely forgot in which book I read that. It was really amazing. I'll, I'll surely figure that out and we'll post in the comment section. So it was really a good advice that I take from that book. I have been a uh, book. I have been applying that uh, from last four or five months. It's absolutely insanely productive. It really works. So all those people who are gonna get Android P, it's gonna be really productive. I personally do recommend to do some kind of thing like that. In case you don't have a chance to get an Android P as an update, uh, please make sure there are a lot of apps. You can have a grayscale wallpaper. There's a lot of things that you can do to remove those colors and turn off most of the notifications. So it's really productive. Now this thing brings up to our next point, which is still like kind of addressed, but not much addressed. One of the biggest issues that everybody knows in the Android is the percentage of the device which are using the latest Android. We all know that still Android Oreo is like almost out and is going to be really out again. Uh, they are serving only to 1.1% of the, all the devices which are running the Android. Now, the point is, when this problem is gonna be solved, I see that really that uh, Google is now opening the door for a variety of more vendors so that they can uh, out really ship this Android P there. So I think this is a step forward in the right direction so that more devices can have the latest software. I know this problem cannot be solved overnight, but I think that's the right, uh, this is a step in right direction. So I'm a little bit happy about that, that yes, the team is actually thinking about it. Now let's come on to the main agenda, which is gonna affect you as a programmer quite a lot, which is machine learning. So everybody knew that today or maybe tomorrow it's going to happen, this ML kit, was meant to be released uh, obviously in the Android Oreo version, but it took a little bit time and they finally released in the Android P. I'm really happy that they are shipping it directly with uh, the Firebase. So just like you had your lot of things in the Firebase, you will be having MLKit. The really, really good part is that it's completely like uh, platform independent. You can use this MLKit into iOS, Android, and surely if it is in the Firebase, it can be probably be used in the web as well. Obviously the TensorFlow JS is being used quite oftenly in the browser and totally in the browser. So I think that's gonna be really a good step that they have got everything integrated in the Firebase. Everybody knew this, that it's gonna come up probably today or tomorrow. So ML and machine learning, all these neural network, deep learning, all these things are making a great impact in everybody's life. So it was really the obvious thing that had to come up and Android has to support these kinds of things. I know Google had its own reason to make that delay, but finally, regardless of that, it's finally here, and obviously you'll be seeing some of the videos on this channel as well about the machine learning and the ML kit on Android and how to run that, configure that, use that in our day-to-day -day life. All these videos, I'll try my best to get them as soon as possible. As soon as they release out the proper version and it's really stable, I would be making no uh, delay in that. I will be posting videos on that. I'm really happy that it's finally here and the possibilities are endless with machine learning. And I think 
uh, the one of the reason why I love the Google so much is Google is one of those companies who are uh, making a revolution as well as taking that revolution and bringing that into every user's hand. That is so far being done by on, only a few companies and that's the reason why uh, everybody is leaning towards the Google and all the things that they are doing. So the long story short, machine learning is finally here in the Android and very soon we'll be discussing a lot of things in the separate videos of how to configure that, how to use Firebase, tons of things about that in the upcoming videos but let's just keep it there with the news that yes, finally machine learning is available in the Android. Now moving on to the point where they try to make a lot of big impact but it still scares me a little bit is the self-driving cars. Yes, I know a lot of people might be defending that yes, self-driving cars are, are going to be the future, they are using machine learning, AIs and all these things. But it reminds me of an incident where a pedestrian had to see some of the uh, really mishappening uh, went out there and it was really a nightmare situation for somebody and somebody's family for these incidents to happen. So let's not forget that, that yes, incidents do happen. We are humans, we are totally unpredictable, absolutely unpredictable. No matter what kind of machine learning, AI, whatever you want to have, just keep that there. But still we are unpredictable and that's really a big thing, big thing. And it's gonna make a big impact there. So no matter how data they suggest there, how many data they put up on the screen to impress me, uh, I am always going to be a little bit like inside about these self-driving cars. I know this is going to be the future. Very soon we'll be seeing them hanging around all the way long. But uh, if you have been watching the interviews about the Vice and all these uh, channels, let me just give you a brief scenario about that. Recently there was an interview about Elon Musk about the Tesla. And uh, Musk was the guy who said that we want less humans in our factory for producing Tesla. And later on he said that this was our big mistake because we want more humans in our factory so that we can st speed up our production because uh, machines can be slow sometimes. If you haven't watched this, I'll try to link that video in my description box. It's somewhere there about some new channel. I saw that on YouTube and it's actually good. And you might be seeing that with their video title saying uh, Musk is being sleeping in his own factory. And that's exactly the reason he wants to figure out what are the things going on wrong with the machine and where can I introduce humans to speed up those process. So yes, machine learning, self-driving car, all these are amazing. But don't forget that uh, the human role sometimes can be like, you know, it needs to be there. So still, I am a little bit about uh, on the picky side whether the self-driving cars are going to be uh, right there out or it will take some more time. Whatever that is, it's, it's a future direction. Nobody knows future, how it's going to happen. Let's just see how it goes on. So overall, it was a pretty good event. I saw that from my computers, just like you guys. I uh, enjoyed it a lot. I always love to see these kinds of events and I'm super happy to see that. Now we have the technology that I can sit at my home in my pajamas, can have amazing iced tea and can watch these events. I, I just love that. So good thing is, as a programmers, we have a lot of things to learn as a lot of things are going to be coming up which you can learn, can implement, can change, can revolutionize the world and a lot of things we can do. So I'm super happy, super pumped up that as a programmer, we have a lot of things to do. So that's it for the briefings of the kind of programming briefings for the Google I.O. And I am really super excited for that. That's all from this side. In case you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, go ahead, do hit the subscribe button. In case you have enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and let's catch up back again in another video. Still in your ears You're on your